hey guys welcome back to pop daddy if you like it subscribe it uh so i'm very 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 excited for this interview you may know him from deathgasm you may know him from the latest pork pie you may know him from mega time squad or you may not know him at all thanks for coming out it's nice to see such mm, a big yeah, crowd thank you so much hey all these guys get you carried away yeah. <laughs> so you're in a band yeah i um, i play uh, the guitar i mean x what the hell where have you been all day xander is pissed yeah, i'm in some trouble man i think i'm being tracked have they taken you to piss chuggers yet no Whoa! i'm a power ranger ah! And is, that a, is, that your, is that a mask on your head? Oh, yeah. Yeah, kind of protect the identity and kind of keep me safe from any, from any kind of shafts of light. Introducing none other than Milo Cawthorn. How's it going? Oh, it's good. It's good. Been a few years since I've seen your mug. Hey, the year, but they've flown by. It feels oh, like it was just yesterday. That's the beautiful thing about you, Axel. <laughs> It's always like you're right there. So how's things? Mate, uh, things, are, things are pretty free and breezy, if you know what I'm talking about. Uh, I just finished a small gig on a, on a web series. Now it's a vast ocean of nothingness stretching out in front of me. I need to work out what to do with my uh, time or else I will just scroll YouTube endlessly. Well, you can scroll YouTube. Make sure that you're checking out Pop Daddy, though. <laughs> all things pop fiction that's why it's fantastic to have you on board because of course you've done some pretty huge pop fictiony type stuff which we'll talk about very soon you know such as deathgasm i mean you know that's had a huge cult following people have made you into a pop vinyl that's exciting possibilities are endless when it comes to that awesome. excited very very excited actually yeah i almost want to do the, the pop daddy dance <laughs> we have a dance <laughs> yeah sure we'll work that out we'll, Sweet, we'll choreograph cool. awesome why don't you just tell us your name and where you're uh, based at the moment this is like an audition hello uh, my name's milo and i'm based in auckland tamaki makoto originally from whangarei i grew up two hours north of auckland in a place called whangarei on the way out to whangarei heads in a place in a small small part of whangarei called onorahi it was it's it's mainly a farming town i think People, yeah, I think it's and it's been a national stronghold for a long, long time politically until just recently. Jacinda, God bless. You. Yeah, it was. It was when I was uh, I was born in '89 up there, and my parents were kind of uh, hip, hippies, I guess you'd say. And so we had a big, we had a big bit of land that was council owned behind us in the big forest up there. So I spent a lot of time on like little motorbikes and walking through the woods with like, I was really into knives as a kid. I must've been a freaky little kid. So me and my brother would have knives and go walking through the forest. Like, yeah, we're, on, we're hunters, but we weren't catching anything. We weren't doing anything useful, just walking around. Trying to look intimidating. That's right. Always yeah. trying to look intimidating, always failing. I mean, having a face like that, I doubt anybody would be intimidated, but hey, you got to try, right? You can only but try Axel, you can only but try. So what were your best and worst school subjects? So I loved English. And I loved writing. There was a short story competition. And the, the, this is, I don't know if I've told many people this. The topic was how the Kiwi lost its ability to fly or how the Kiwi lost its wings. And they said, everyone's got to write a story about how that happened. And I remembered we had a book on our shelves that was literally a professionally written short story children's book about how the Kiwi lost its wings. I copied that word for word. <laughs> And I won. I like won this short story prize and they made me read out my story in front of my class. And it was highly embarrassing. But no one, no one ever found out. I got away with that. And my wor and so that's why I love English so much. And then my worst subjects, you know, the class, I was pretty bad at maths. You know, the maths, the sciences, the useful, the useful everyday subjects that will actually get you somewhere in life. Those were the ones that I was bad at. I think I think as actors, English is definitely something that we were good at because I mean we have to be, and then maths. Well, I mean unless you're playing a maths guy in a film or something, it's really of no relevance. You know? Yeah, we don't need two that. Two plus two. Oh, that's six. Come on, <laughs> simple. <laughs> yeah, there's very little call for maths in acting day to day. 
Yeah, yeah. Unless, of course, you've been at Cumberbatch and, uh, you know, that war movie that he was in, it was all numbers and stuff. Well, Stephen Hawking, you know. Uh, <laughs> Stephen Hawking, he needs man. Yeah, what was that? Uh, what was that movie called with Cumberbatch? He was like solving the Enigma puzzle. Or... Yeah. Uh, it's, it's gone. I know that Eddie Redman with Hawking was the theory of everything, but I can't remember the Benedict one. Now, you're a man who watches a lot of films. I haven't seen either of those, but you've seen both, I imagine. Theory of Everything I've seen twice and it's made me cry. Yes, Whoa. yes, I know. Guilty, yeah. Um, was it called the... No, it's not called The Imitation Game. No, I, that's what I thought. I, I wanted to say The Imitation Game. Benedict's movie, it was good. It was a little hard to follow because it's not really my style. I kind of watched it because, of course, Smaug or The Necromancer from The Hobbit, Doctor Strange from Marvel. But yeah, Theory of Everything, probably my favourite. I even saw that at the theatres with Mum and that was a pretty oh. cool mother-son moment, so... Yeah, nice. Nice way to bond. Very cool. So what was your favourite game growing up? Uh, wow. Okay. I was big into... So we begged and pleaded and we got a Sega... Now, what was it? It was I don't think we got a Mega Drive, but we could play Sonic. So it was a cartridge Sonic game. So that might have been a Master System. I was big into Sonic. Heavily... from That must have been from the age of like six to nine. And then... We begged and pleaded again, and our family wasn't super rich, but my dad, my dad was generous enough to buy us a PlayStation. I don't know. I, we definitely hounded him for that, <laughs> that, and that was a that was a very that was a jubilant day in our household. And then I just on PlayStation, we were big in Tony Hawk's, massive time Tony Hawk's, and then the next one I, I can think of is Halo. And since then, I haven't doing, been doing much gaming. The only thing I have been playing is Rocket League. Well, Rocket League is just cars playing soccer. Cars. Cars. Like, brum, 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 cars playing soccer. That's exactly right. My goodness, you need more acting work, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I need something. I gotta do something to fill the time. Yeah. So oh, coincidentally, we should mention my brother's name is Axel. Well, there you go. They say great things come by those that are named with the correct name. They say that. They do say that. <laughs> uh, so talking about you know being a big fan of Sonic and stuff. Well, yes. did, have, have you seen the movie, the latest one? No, I avoided it because people said it's it's a creepy, creepy movie. Oh, it's great. Is it great? It's great. And uh, what's his name? Why is all this blankness ha happening to me? Ace Ventura, Pet Detective. Um, he plays, uh, it's, not, it's not Doom, Robotnik. Dr. Robotnik. Yeah, yeah. But no, it's good. I always say if somebody's to tell me their own views about something, that's great. Let me find out myself. So that's my encouragement to you. Go and check it out for yourself. If it is, if it is creepy, okay, cool. Doesn't mean you can believe everything your friends are saying from that point onwards. I thought it was great. Okay, yeah, I'll have to check that one. I've got to get to, I've got to, I'm going to have a big list of movies to watch after this, I feel. What would be your most embarrassing childhood memory? Oh, there's so many to choose from. Uh... <laughs> I, <laughs> the roller deck, so you get a roller deck. You know what? I feel like. Chicken tonight, chicken tonight, chicken tonight. I feel like I've had more embarrassing moments past the age of 17 than I have previous to it. But maybe I've blocked some stuff out. Yeah, maybe. But you do that. I'll go with one. But it was actually good because I kind of got away with it. But if anybody found out, it was... anyway, we're at a friend's house and we, my parents had taken us over there and there were these two other like brothers there who we got on pretty well with. So we were there like gaming. I think we were playing Gran Turismo or something. And it was the first time I've been to their house and I was like, oh man, I really need to use the bathroom. I need to urinate. I, I gotta go pee. But I'm like, I'm like nine or something. And so I'm, a li I'm just a little bit shy about like, where's your bathroom? And I, so I was like, yeah. And then it got to the point where I was like busting. I was like, okay, I can't be shy anymore. I've got to go ask someone. And so I like went into the living room and the, my parents were sitting around chatting. And then I was like, oh, it, it'd be rude to like bust in and be like, hey, where's your bathroom? And that's embarrassing for them and for me. So I like waited while they were chatting. And I was like, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. And they're like, ha, 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 yeah, ha, 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 chatting. And then I was like, man, maybe I hurry up because I'm about to, I'm about to make this like living room stink. And finally, I was like, actually, I always say, where's the bathroom? 
And the the mum was like, oh, the bathroom. Yeah, okay, well, you want the bathroom. What are you going to do is? And I was like, oh, my God, hurry up. And she finally told me where it was. I, like, opened a cupboard first of all. Like, oh, that's not it. Like, finally get in there. And as soon as I get the door closed, I just piss my pants. And I'm like, oh, shit. I've <laughs> gone. And I mopped some of it. I, it was a lot. And I had to mop up some of it with, like, the shower you know, the bath mat, I had to mop some of it up with that. So I mopped it up and then kind of scrunched that off to the side. And then my whole pants were wet and I was like, oh God, what am I do now? Had a jumper on, took that off, tied it round but backwards. So the big part of the jumper was hanging around the front. And then I just didn't tell anybody. And luckily I think that was like half an hour before we were supposed to go. So I just went back to the room and was just like very quiet. Like, cool. And then on the car ride home, the only thing, the only thing that anybody noticed was on the car ride home, my mum was like, yes. This car smells, smells like piss. Nobody else found out. So I'd probably say that was one of the more embarrassing moments. No one found out until now. There you go. <laughs> if that family's watching now, they'll be very, very disappointed. <laughs> I'm Elo's mom. <laughs> <laughs> so who and what inspires you? Speaking of, Jim Carrey. And that's the way uh -huh, uh -huh, I like it. Uh -huh, uh -huh. When I was young, he was probably the, the main thing that I gravitated towards. And when, when I was a kid, I was like impersonating Jim Carrey. I saw the second Ace Ventura first. They consider its disappearance both an insult and a curse. And I was just like, oh my God, like I'd never seen anything like it. And I recently rewatched it and I was like, still to this day, it's insane. The energy that he gives in every scene, it's, it's, it's manic. So he's definitely up there. Who else inspires me? Oh, okay. There's a really, really great show called How To with John Wilson, executive produced by a, this a comedian called Nathan Fielder, who's, who has a show called Nathan For You. And there's something about this series, How To with John Wilson. It's just like him documenting parts of New York City and then narrating over the top. And, but it's kind of like a humorous observational narration because it's so lo-fi it makes me think like oh it's like accessible like and i could like i could film something with a shitty camera and it wouldn't like like it's it seems within reach everybody has their celebrity crush uh for me it is chloe grace moretz and scarlett johansson what about yourself uh, let me just first say i did a small job that chloe grace moretz was on we never were in the same room Occasionally we were in we were in the same car park and we would pass each other, but she was very much just like, I, but I think part of that is because her character was supposed to hate our characters. It's Shadow in the Cloud. Did you watch that one? You're in it? No, I'm not. Oh, Here's the story. Okay. Here's the story. Because most of the film she's in the, she's in the bottom part of the airplane talking to the other guys, and we were voicing the other guys before the Americans got there. So you never hear me, but I was just kind of, she was acting against us. And then the American guys came in and, and actually did the real stuff. So really, <laughs> she, so really I'm not in it at all, but it was a great experience. And I, I would pass her like in the car park. And, I was like, oh, yes. and, she, and she was very, she, I think she was like kind of method, kind of, kind of going method. The most she said to us was like, hey, how's it going? And we were like, good. She was like, great. And then bang, she's gone. For a long time, it was Katie Holmes. So, when I was a teenager, it was Katie Holmes. And it was in then, Dawson's Creek? Was it Dawson's yes, Creek? Yes, it was Dawson's Creek era Katie Holmes. I, I had posters of her on my wall, but I didn't really know. I don't know if I really knew her work. I just, I was just like, that's a cool person to have a crush on. And now, <laughs> now I'm just going with the blow. And now Slippery Crush would probably be Michelle Williams. I can't do this anymore. What do you like doing in your spare time? Recently, I bought a scooter. 125 cc monster. My brother and my dad are both really good with their hands and I've never been that talented in that way. And so recently what I've been doing in my spare time is like changing the oil and accidentally removing the sump plug and all the oil just drains onto my driveway, getting a new spark plug and it's the wrong spark plug so the thing like doesn't run properly. But basically I, that's been really fulfilling to me. I'm doing like little bits with my hands, hanging some shelves up on the wall. Yeah, other than that, I really like, I like bike riding as well. I haven't been doing much of that recently, so. Biggest pet peeve, and you cannot say working with me. <laughs> uh, that would be biggest, that would be biggest joy. 
You don't have to say things like that. <laughs> Do you know what? I find it hard when people interrupting other people, but mainly me, if I'm honest, people interrupting me. I know exactly what that's like. People are like, you speak so fast. I'm like, yeah, because all the time back in the day, I used to get cut off. So now to make sure I get everything I need to say, I talk really, really fast to make sure I get my point across. You know, and people are like, whoa, what do you say? I'm like, well, are you going to let me say it? <laughs> yeah, I completely understand. Yeah, did you grow up, did you have, because I had an older brother, did you have siblings? Because I think that might. Younger, I had younger siblings. Yeah. Shout out to Aaron and Shuri, keeping it real in the fams. What's your most annoying habit? I'm, I'm eternally late, as you well know, Axel. I was over an hour late with yeah, this. We're actors, it's okay. I would probably say it's something, it'd be something like that. It'd be lateness. And like, I'll, I'll say like, I have a warped sense of time. So if someone's like, hey, meet me at 12.30 for lunch. I'm like, yeah. And then someone else is like, hey, um, can I, can I hang out with you at one o'clock? I'm like, yeah, I can squeeze that in. And it just never works. But my, I, I still keep my, <laughs> I still keep. <laughs> see, you're a man. See, with that kind of action, I see that you could make that work. That kind of mime <laughs> action. I see that. You're capable of that. Yeah, yeah. Well, you just get the plate and just, oh, all right, let's go. <laughs> yeah, always carry a funnel with me. <laughs> oh, what's that? <coughs> Chicken bone. <laughs> Do you speak any other languages? Niente. No, I don't. Wish I did. I should probably learn today. Uh, I should probably learn German because I wouldn't mind going to hang out in Germany for a bit. But uh, you should learn no. Elvish. Should learn Elvish. It would. It would be good to. It'd be good to get a role on that uh, show that's uh, shooting at the moment. Yeah, yeah. So if you weren't acting, what would you be doing right now? I, well, I'm not acting now, so I should know what I'm doing. I painted houses for a long time. For five years, I painted houses. A very boring job, Axel. I'm not sure if you've ever done that before. Very, extremely boring. A little bit of it. And yeah, yeah. 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 Really gets old quick. So um, now I'm thinking, <laughs> if I wasn't acting, I'd be... Mm, that's a good answer. <laughs> Doing <laughs> nothing. <laughs> It'd be on the benefit playing Sega. <laughs> oh, look. I'll get that high score on Sonic. <laughs> and your partner would be like, when are you getting a job? When I beat the high score. <laughs> yeah. I mean, come on. Space. Priorities. Obviously, you've worked in a whole wide range of different projects. You know, I've had the privilege of seeing a few of those, even some small cameos such as Pork Pie fantastic role for you by the way what attracted you to begin a career as an actor i always liked making my mum laugh and my brother laugh and he used to we had a dress up box and i had like a skivvy or like a jumper like this and we had this foam i don't know where we had this foam from it was like padding and he would he would like put the foam in so it looked like i had muscles and then i would go and my mum would take photos of me and i'm like yeah because i was a tiny i was real short for my age and so i'd be this tiny little muscle bound weirdo and i really enjoyed that attention uh someone came to school giving like drama like, there's like a local youth theater in Whangarei called northland youth theater and they were doing lunchtime drama classes and i was like that's me hook it up and so did that and then they did productions and then from there i got an agent during high school i just kind of fell into it because that, that was like my thing that i did instead of playing soccer or whatever that was my thing and then as high school came to a came to an end i was like what else would I rather be doing? There's nothing that really comes close. I, I didn't see myself going to university. I'm like, man, I'd be so bored at university. And so I just kind of kept going. It's quite odd to find yourself to be like, oh, here I am, 32, and I'm still just doing beating the same old drum. So earlier you were talking about you would just recently been doing a web series. What can you tell us about that? Very hush hush. Very now. Nah. Actually, I actually don't know how much I can tell you. I know it's it's uh, set in a it's set in like a talkback radio station, and it's a comedy. I play a guy. No, what? You play a guy? Is it's that a big change first time? <laughs> big change. I had to do a lot of research into men and how they operate. They're disgusting, by the way. Men are horrible. And my character basically, his sole purpose in life is to piss other people off. Not much of a change for me. Yeah, um, no, no, you didn't have to act at all, did you? They kind of yeah. just rolled, and I just yeah. said what I would always say. When's more information going to come out? Like the the name of it, where it's going to be played, all that kind of stuff. It, well, it's definitely going to be online. 
on demand. July, I think, is when we can start crowing about it. Just keep an eye out on my Facebook page because I will share the post from Milo, of course, to go and uh, check it out. So what would you say to you, your younger self? It doesn't have to be about acting. Uh, what would be one thing you would tell your younger self? I would say you don't have to put so much pressure on yourself. And also I would say it's going to be sweet. Of course, there's a lot of potential actors out there or aspiring actors. One thing I actually heard recently is you're not an aspiring actor, you're an actor. There's nothing aspiring about it. If you're studying it, training, if you're in it, you're an actor, that's it. But what would you sort of give as a piece of advice to another fellow actor, perhaps starting out? I agree with that sentiment. Much like being a writer or an artist of any kind, it's only going to limit you to, to put aspiring in front of it or, or trainee or whatever. Okay, so if you're just starting out, find some place that you can do acting regularly. <laughs> and when, like, I, I, used to, I used to go to weekly classes in Auckland when I first moved here. What I would say, I guess this would be advice to myself again, but I was like, what about that do you enjoy? Where is the fun thing for you in acting? Is it completely different character is it is it like the reaction against the other person is it different personalities you like to try on what brings you joy about it and then just trying to kind of follow whatever brings you that joy i would try and find somewhere close by whatever it is that that means you're doing it regularly and thinking about it regularly so the other day i was strolling through youtube prior to this interview i decided to chuck in your name and see what results would come out so you've been in a panel for uh, power rangers what was that like that was terrifying. It's my only Power Rangers convention I've ever been to. It was in Kentucky, in Lexington, uh, in 2017. And it was both overwhelming and underwhelming. <laughs> I don't know if you can see from the video, there's only like 20 people in the audience. But they're all, they're all amazing, well-researched, knowledgeable fans. They know more about my series of Power Rangers than I do. Look at these tiny little sweets. <laughs> Uh, um, <laughs> the audition pro hey thanks for coming out it's nice to see such mm, a big yeah, crowd thank you so much like, yeah. you look beautiful okay so the audition process all right so i auditioned er, i was delivering pizzas at the time and i got the audition pro and i got the script and it said ziggy was kind of like a nerd so i had this weird haircut i had like a bowl haircut at the time and i put like braces on and i came in looking as nerdy as possible and the casting director was like you gotta get a haircut. You look weird. <laughs> and so, um, so I came for the callback, and I had a haircut and stuff. And she's like, "Yep, all good." It's it really is incredible. Like the, the the fan base for Power Rangers is just this amazing resource of knowledge, and and they they spend so much time and energy. It's it's incredible. I guess like many like many fan bases around the world, but I feel like for Power Rangers especially, there's like a certain like focus that these people have. Yeah, I, I, it was it was nerve wracking because I find there's the pressure to be funny, especially in a panel, and you're like, oh no, now it's my turn. Now I have to say something funny. But it was really nice. I as another part of, of that weekend was me just sitting at a booth and people coming up and chatting, and I found that much easier, like one on one, and I could have a little more in depth conversations with people and. Is that for uh, um, sign signatures and photos and stuff as well? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Which, can I say, also feel, as a New Zealander, feels really, really odd because people pay you for your photo and a signature and it's like, this feels wrong. I get, yeah, this, like, I get the Zoom call for free. I mean, you know. <laughs> felt a bit, I think it's a big thing for Kiwis because it feels unnatural. We just don't encounter that here. We don't, there's not that level of pop culture fan base here um or maybe there is but not for anything that i've been involved in and so it's quite it, it was quite shocking obviously you've been on stage you've been on screen what's the biggest difference between the two for you morgana o'reilly who i was just working with who's a really great actress she had a brilliant take on this and i'm going to steal that from her because i agree with it wholeheartedly on screen you are like a vending machine and the director and the editor choose what they want. So you just go, I've got a bottle of Coke, I've got Sprite, I've got Fanta, I've got a Mars bar, I've got, I got Picnic, I've got Snickers, and, you just, and they just go, another take, give me that, another take, give me that, another take. So you just churn out these options, like ching, 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 ching. You try and give as much as you can, and then they go, and then they select in the edit, and they go, we'll take that, we'll mix the Coke with the other yada. And then on stage, you're in control and you are reacting real time to your other performers on stage and the audience. 
and you're adjusting. So basically on stage, it's, it's an actor's medium more, I would say, and you can hone the performance over time and go like deeper into a performance and screen feels more like you're a, a tool in, in, a, in someone's toolkit. And you're just like, oh, I, can, I can give you this and I can give you that, da, 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 but ultimately it's out of my hands. I'd say recently, but of course last year was uh, COVID, so that that pretty much was deleted from my brain. Uh, so recently, you were on stage with Arlo. Uh, you may have recognised Arlo from Shorten Street. He was in Shorten Street. Uh, he was also Mega Time Squad. He wears uh, pedo shoes. Oh. <laughs> Wait, what's with the pedo shoes? What? Your shoes say pedo. Oh, no. I say dope. What are you, pedo? <laughs> Shame! <laughs> Shame! <laughs> yeah, so what was it like working with Arlo and Frith on stage and getting to actually tour that production? That was a horrible experience for me, only because, <laughs> only because I just got, it's the most sick I've ever been. I was having, I was like cold sweats and then hot like fevers so much so that I couldn't sleep. I was so sick during that. We did all, we only did two cities, we did Auckland and Wellington. Well, okay, here's the thing, cause I was so sick and I was like, I was so angry that I was sick. Cause I was like, God, damn, I just wanna do this show. Cause it's a really great show to do. Arlo's amazing, Fritz amazing. I was like, this could be something great and I'm sick, I'm running it all. And then in the play, spoiler alert, I have to kiss both of them. And so I thought to myself, well, they're gonna get a taste of my medicine, except sickness, and they're gonna get sick as well. And then they'll know the pain. I was very, it was a bad childish way of looking at it, but I was like, at least, they'll know motives. <laughs> yeah, at least they'll know what I'm going through. And for weeks we were down there and I kissed them every night and not one of them, not one of them got even a sniffle. And I was just sweating, just like sweating every night, like shivering, like, okay, yeah, and on stage, like, so yeah, that part was bad, but that play, what, what, Mating in Captivity, written by Oliver Page, it's been, they, they optioned it and took it to London, where other actors did it in London. He's a, he's a really good writer as Oliver and a friend of mine. Yeah, so that was a, that was great. And actually that was a weird one because I'd done that play before with a different actor called Jack Buchanan, who had the viral hit during lockdown, Lockdown Boogie. This one goes out to anyone who's on coronavirus lockdown with their immediate family. This is the family lockdown boogie. We're stuck here in the house for the next four weeks or so. And we won't be going out because the government said no. We did the show previously with him and then I took his role and Arlo took my role that I played. So it was quite a weird thing to be doing the same play in a different role with Arlo. Yeah, I, I went and saw that performance. Yeah, definitely 10 out of 10. Something I wasn't expecting. Uh, having worked with Arlo, I kind of, you know, <laughs> had to shy away a little bit. You know, I was like, I work with that guy. But I actually got you guys to sign the, the program afterwards, okay. uh, laminated, and I've still got it actually somewhere. It's going to be worth about 20 cents on Trade Me. Yeah, I'm not worried about what it's worth. It's more sentimental value. <laughs> and then maybe in a couple of years when you're famous, I'll sell it. But uh, that's right. yeah. That's right. Gotta wait for the right right timing. What do you feel is more important for an actor? Talent or training? I find that right. How do you quantify talent? The interesting thing about acting is it's so it's one of the only subjective art forms. I guess maybe painting is another one. But like dance, singing. If you can't sing, if you haven't been trained to sing, or if you have... The, you just, you just can't do it. Same with dancing. If you haven't done lots of dance, you just can't do it. But acting is one of the only things where they're like, I'm going to cast someone off the street. We just found him and he's in our movie. Boom. And also, the people have very, such varying views. Like some people love Nicole Kidman. Some people absolutely hate Nicole Kidman and think she's the most boring actress in the world, can't act for crap. And yet she's famous and she makes tons of movies. Well, hey, wait, so are you sure it's Nicole Kidman and not Robert Pattinson? <laughs> Him too. But like, well, that's a great example. It's literally every actor. You can talk to them and someone's like, oh, God, I'm sick of them. Uh, so I feel like, tonight, like tonight. which maybe doesn't make any sense, but I, I'm going to say 
talent because I feel like whatever you want to call talent or on-screen presence or, or off-screen presence, whatever, because there are so many people who have never trained and just seem to be magnetic and watchable. I think training definitely comes in handy if you want to do lots of different mediums. If you want to do a musical and then do a play and then do a TV series, then I think you need to know some some different kind of things about how, how cameras work and where you want to be. But other than that, I feel like talent will get you a, or just raw kind of charisma can get you a really long way. Personally, I've not had any training at all. I've had a little bit of stage training. Well, hello, I've done a few big things and, you know, people have admired my work for whatever bloody strange reason, but they've admired my work and that's without any sort of training. And one thing I've always noticed, and I mean, you'll know this and all the other actors here in New Zealand will know this. It's not so much what you know here in New Zealand, it's who you know. Since we're such a small country and there's a lot of us that want to be actors, not everybody can be. It's about that networking. And then you get to make your first few steps and then you start getting noticed by more people. It's an interesting industry in New Zealand, eh? Because it is it is so small and you do pretty much know everyone or at least know someone who knows them. And so it does make for a kind of it's a strange, it's a strange industry compared to like even Australia you know, just is that much, is that much bigger? And, and uh, yeah, is it, it's a different vibe of being an actor in one of those bigger places. So what character seems to attract you more? I have always played nerds, un, unsure of themselves, nervy, fast talking, uh, stumbly over their words. That was what from like, from the early roles when I was a kid on any screen roles, that was always the ones I was playing. And I was saying to someone who was saying, yeah, but, when you're a kid doing children's television, there's basically only two options. It's like the bully or the nerd, or maybe there's the like straight man leading guy. And uh, I was like, oh, that's, that's a good point. But yeah, and then generally in my, in my career, I normally play people who aren't super sure of themselves and aren't super confident, suave gangsters. And is that the role that you'd like? Or is that the role that you tend to be cast into? I, I do enjoy playing those characters. I think because of Jim Carrey, I enjoy lots of stuff. I enjoy giving lots. I've often been accused of being an over actor. I'm not the I'm not the guy who's like doing one small head nod and looking like very serious. I find that very hard. To do less, I find really hard. So it comes easier to me. It's more natural to me to do more and to give bigger facial expressions. So yeah, I guess I do enjoy playing those parts. Because I feel a bit, I feel a bit freer and a bit natural. It's always nice to have a challenge, playing something different to what you'd normally do. But on the whole, yeah, I've been pretty, I've been fairly happy. What genre would you like to try that you haven't yet? God, what genre would I want to try? I, you know what I'd love to try is some slapstick comedy. How do you rehearse a scene when all the other actors aren't around? I record the lines into my phone, giving space for my lines. There's two questions that I try to ask myself. If the scene's a kind of a long one, I go, why did my character come into this room? And how did my character think this conversation was going to go? And then I try and kind of rehearse with my phone doing that. What techniques do you use to create a believable character? I, like you, have done very, very minimal training. I auditioned for drama school, I auditioned for Toy Fikati and uh, the Sydney Drama School, NIDA. And I got denied both when I was... 18 and so I was like oh okay that wasn't in my plans and then I moved to Auckland and became a pizza deliverer and then I went to a weekly class which was the Meisner technique which was a technique taught in New York at the acting studio in, from the 70s but basically it was, it was founded by this guy called Sanford Meisner who learned from oh god basically it's 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 an American division of like Stanislavski technique which Stanislavski was a Russian guy and so the technique of Meisner is your performance is is in the other person you're just reacting to the other person uh, and a lot of it is, is based on you learn you try and learn your lines just deadpan without any inflection or emotion so that then you can just react and the emotion can come out onto the words and you're not putting anything on there yourself uh, and so this technique, I, I find when I'm when I'm struggling and when I'm like, oh, this seems bad, or I feel like I'm, or I feel like this isn't working. That's when I'll try and maybe kickstart some Meisner things. But 
other than that, I, I like to think about Miranda Harcourt. I had this great tip for me and she said, when you read a character description for an audition, it'll always say like, this is a handsome, charming man who's a lady killer and is uh, beautiful. And uh, <laughs> yeah, so they're just writing it for you. So why, why, do we, why do we audition for those ones? <laughs> Basically, when I read a character description like that, like this guy is so smooth, I'm like, what the hell, I'm not smooth. I'm like a thin, weedy little man from Fangarela. I can't play this guy. 